Welcome back after the break. My name is Peter Gavikin, and I'm responsible for planning, manufacturing, and design operations. So over the next number of slides, I'm going to take you through our holistic approach to planning and design operations. I'm going to speak about our manufacturing culture, and I'm also going to speak about pioneering a new way in terms of integration right across the supply chain. So moving into our planning and design function and our holistic approach, we consider planning and design around the principles of consumer requirements, place making, regulatory and delivery. In terms of consumer requirements, we consider institutional and retail consumers and con customers in terms of what their ask is of us, what their needs are in terms of private and public open space, in terms of fit and finish, in terms of layout. But on top of that, we look at the latent needs of the customer. And when I speak about latent needs, I speak about the needs that the customer might not know they have. And a practical example of this is our heat pump technology. We use heat pumps in our suburban developments in our houses now. And often, on open weekends, consumers and customers ask us, what is the apparatus or what is that piece of equipment in the back of the house? We explain it's a heat pump. And then a number of months later, after using the heat pump, becomes apparent the convenience of the heat pump is a must-have now for those consumers. So we're constantly looking at pushing the boundaries in terms of innovating our house and scheme design and looking at those latent needs of the customers. In terms of affordability, Stephen has mentioned it and Connor has mentioned it. In terms of design principles, we've brought a new dimension into design and working with our design teams. So it's not only about designing a house or designing a residential unit and fitting with regulatory compliance. It's also about looking at affordability in the area, the macro prudential rules, the three and a half times income. That's a key component of our design influence. Placemaking. We've recently engaged a design team here in the UK and to make an interesting analogy. Everybody considered and thinks about where they're going to live. How many people consider about where the house is going to live? So what is the architecture in the surrounding environment? How, we, how are we representing that in our schemes? How are, how are our schemes fitting in with the natural surrounding environment? How are we leveraging public, and public open space? And how are we leveraging infrastructure in the surrounding environment? Do we consider the requirements of the urban and the suburban surrounding environment throughout our design process? Moving on to a regulatory. In Ireland, most of you are familiar, we have a number of plans and regulations in terms of our obligations to fulfil on developing out <coughs> residential delivery. <coughs> and that can be across national planning framework, development plans and local area plans. And sometimes there can be inconsistencies across those plans, but there's a drive now on at policy level in terms of bringing consistency across those plans. And generally, generally, the policy is providing an urbanisation of the suburban locations and a higher urbanisation of the urban locations. So they're trying to consolidate towns and bring vibrancy to town and village centres. So therefore, the suburban development now, as Stephen alluded to earlier, has a component of low-rise urban product. And while we are obliged to comply with policies, we see ourselves as a trusted partner. So we get involved in dialogue, in the formulation of policy, through submission, through public consultation. And it's, it's our function to work with the policymakers and in informing them on what the consumer requirements are, what the viability issues are, what the macroprudential rules mean in terms of forming policy that derives a certain density a certain percentage of private and public open space. In terms of construction regs, construction regs in Ireland are at NZ level, near zero energy buildings. So it's almost at that holy grail of the housing unit becoming a net contributor to energy rather than a net consumer. NZ isn't a problem for us because we've been there and we've been there a long time at this stage. We've been there well over a year. So NZ isn't a problem for us. We're aiming above NZ. What does that mean for us? What do our design teams need to engage now in terms of bringing our houses above NZIP, our residential units above NZIP? What does that mean for our construction teams? The reason we're at NZIP at the minute is because Tony and Fergus, who you'll hear from shortly, their meticulous attention to detail means cold bridging, air tightness, etc., is robust on our housing developments. So we're pushing the boundary to go above our NZIP, which leads on to delivery. In terms of delivery, manufacture and assembly is a common, a common word um, across industry at the minute. Um, so our design teams 
automatically will accommodate manufacturing assembly. And Stephen spoke about earlier, spoke about manufacturing earlier. Our manufacturing at the moment is in terms of timber frame and moving on to 2D steel, which Fergus will speak about in his urban apartments. In terms of that manufacturing piece, we have supply agreements with our manufacturing partners. So our design and our design influence right across the housing units and the scheme layouts will firstly drive efficiency in the manufacturing operations on those manufacturing partners that we have supply agreements with. So we consider manufacturing and assembly as, part, as a key component of our design suite. Also in terms of layout, layout is very important to us and layout is very important in terms of getting a, a good return on capital employed. How can our construction teams work to get proper layout, proper phasing, proper phasing moving throughout the development? How can pedestrian traffic and construction traffic coexist safely on our site? You saw the emphasis by Stephen on safety. Safety is critically important. So our design teams are challenged looking ahead and see how that layout function works. Something I want to speak about is ground. A lot of innovation in recent times in housing has gone into the product itself and the end um, level of, of, of almost passive now indeed insulation. We're looking now at ground and we're looking at ground in terms of how ground can work better for us as a business. How ground can add value, value to the consumer or value to the bottom line of our company. In terms of the regulatory requirements, as I spoke about, there's a certain density that, you, that the planning authority will determine you must make. There's a certain amount of public open space and a certain amount of private open space. And then there's ground. So what ground is left over? What can we do with that ground? In the traditional component type that's used in Ireland, the three bed semi, the two bed townhouse, the terrace unit, and the apartment product, typically in suburban developments now, you're looking at a split of 55% suburban type product and 45% urban type product because you must meet a density while maintaining your private and public open space. So we're re looking really hard at that and we're looking at what if we don't use a traditional product as, that, that is in the sector? What, what about we use a product that will tap into the latent needs of the consumer that I spoke about earlier and a product that will satisfy the needs we know that exist? And those needs we know because that comes back to our sales team from Ronan McKenna that's here with us today. So we're innovating that product type and the first release of that will be tomorrow. Um, back into us to see what that looks like with our construction team and with our viability team. But it means we're pushing that 55-45% split. We're pushing that now to 75-25. So 75% of a suburban product in a suburban location and 25% of an urban product in a suburban location. And that's a real game changer. In terms of our design teams, our design teams have been challenged now. Not only in terms of designing and delivering units according to regulatory requirements, but designing within a set of commercial parameters. Designing to make sure that delivery of that unit makes an exit less than three and a half times income in that area. Design has gone beyond just designing houses for the sake of regulatory compliance. Designing on standardization and making sure that those designs work for our construction team. Moving on to standardization. Standardization is a potentially dangerous word in terms of the perception of it. Is the perception of standardization, does that mean there's going to be standardized housing developments produced by Glen Bay? Not at all. We bring standardization to component level. We bring standardization to standard specs. We bring standardization to standard housing layouts. But we do not have standardized housing developments. They are contextually different in every case and sympathetic to the environment that they are in. To kind of phrase from Stephen, Volkswagen use a similar chassis for, for their Golf, for their Jetta, for the Tiguan, but they're different cars. Similar approach with ourselves. We've standardised housing floor plans, standardised specs, standardised components, but we've different outputs. While we believe there are efficiencies in standardisation, there's no doubt, it's also incumbent upon our manufacturing partners to drive efficiencies in their business. And then we're maximising efficiencies. Efficiencies on the standardisation of layouts and housing units will get you so far. The manufacturing business by adopting manufacturing approaches on just-in-time inventory management, single minute exchange and die, that will drive the efficiencies even further and I'm going to speak to you about that shortly. So the challenge on standardisation. Develop our standardised suite of components. Make sure we're compliant with the regulatory requirements of the planning authorities. Make sure the planners and the planning authority in their subjective opinions accept that we're contextually different on our housing schemes 
and making sure base case requirements on business in terms of marginal return and capital employed are maximised. Standardisation cannot happen and does not happen with the planning and design team alone. It happens with the input of construction, with sales, with our viability teams and with our land management teams. And just to mention, we currently have a number of standardised units. We're using them each and every day in our business. And as I said, tomorrow, we have a new release of a new product into our own company that we, we feel is going to be a game changer in terms of working our ground harder. I want to speak to you about manufacturing and our operations culture. Um, and I'm going to speak about it in terms of decision making, integrating the supply chain, and finally, costs. In term, terms of decision making, we're using a process called sales and operations planning now in Glenvay. And sales and operations planning relies around a demand forecast, a robust set of figures that comes right from demand forecasting back to our construction supply chain, back to our manufacturing partners, and into their suppliers. That's one set of data, one single set of data, and it's derived from demand forecasting by our sales team on all our various sites. So to put it simply, if we have 20 sites open and we have five standard house types, how many of house type A, B, C, D and E are going on that site and when are they going on that site through the construction program? That's pulled back into a manufacturing business. The manufacturing business, which we have a supply agreement with, knows how many of house type A, B, C, D and E are going on each one of our 20 sites and when they're going there. That's pulled further back to their raw material suppliers, i.e. the timber frame suppliers. They know how much material the, the manufacturing business needs to push through that supply chain. That supply chain integration is something we're pioneering in Lembe, and we're finding that that's gaining significant efficiencies in the operation of our business. So it's an integrated business model that's bullish and even selfish on accuracy. It's a, it drives efficiency, it thrives on continuous improvement, and it's relentless on productivity. The strengths of integrating the supply chain through our current supply agreements are that we can give demand accuracy. We can give certainty on demand. We know, given the housing difficulties in Ireland at the moment, once we're lower than the three and a half times income in that area, there's a demand. The question is the demand for what? Is it a demand for the product that the planning system is forcing developers to produce? Or is it the product that innovation while remaining within the framework of the planning system that we produce, that the consumer wants, and it's the latter for us. In terms of sales and operations planning, and I'll leave the slide with this, sales and operations planning as opposed to planning, operations, and sales. Planning for the sake of planning, for getting your planning permission through the re regulatory process. Moving on to operations, who have a look at that planning and decide that layout doesn't work from a construction perspective, that layout doesn't work from a return of capital employed maximising perspective, goes back into design team again for replanning. Sales take a look at it and sales say that three bed, four bed unit in the corner won't sell, we need to change that. Traditional approach to construction. That's planning, operations and sales. We've moved sales and operations planning. One set of numbers, demand forecasting. So, why offsite construction? Because it's not construction, it's manufacturing. So why manufacturing? Well, manufacturing, not because of the shortage in labour. Manufacturing because of the attributes that's inherent in manufacturing. Productivity, quality, tolerances, fit and finish, design, health and safety, removed from inclement weather conditions, removed from the inherent difficulties on site of dust and contamination. Once we move through that process, then off-site manufacturing, or off-site construction, if you want to call it, becomes cost effective, becomes efficient. On all of those attributes, you can define, measure, analyze, improve and control on every single one of those attributes. And that's taking a manufacturing approach to offsite construction. That manufacturing approach is optimized year on year, all the time. And working with our manufacturing partners at the minute to our supply agreements, I'll give you an insight at the end in terms of the optimization we're doing on that. And for all the consideration and talk about off-site manufacturing, it does exist today and it exists in timber frame manufacturing. It exists in component design. I remember the days when windows came to site and the pane was put in on site and putty put on top of it. Now triple glaze alu clad windows are coming as one unit to site. Our timber frames are coming to site as a manufactured product. So, to sum me up, 
exploring ways to build closer links with our supply chain. We believe if we continue to innovate, continue to work closely with our supply chain partners, continue to optimise our design, continue to force that innovation on the product within the realms of the regulatory bodies, that we will gain the efficiencies on programme, cost, quality, health and safety, and certainty will be guaranteed. A couple of examples, because there's been a lot of theory. So, Keenan Timber Frame, who you've seen in a video already, they have a supply agreement with us. And in that supply agreement, we're, we, share, we share plenty of information, so we have a good idea on how their process operates. Okay? On that supply agreement, we've had our uh, procurement director get involved in negotiating some of the material prices. Richie Caldwell is here today. We've negotiated a 35% discount on insulation used in Keenan Timber Frame that's passed directly onto our bottom line. Why? Because we can give certainty and demand and volume across our supply chain. Another example with Keenan Timber Frame, their timber comes from, came from Scandinavia at a point in time. We went up, we looked at their manufacturing line. We made some improvements in terms of efficiency or product flow. But we also suggested, given that we are Irish, and there's plenty of timber in Ireland, could we use some Irish timber. We visited a, an Irish supplier, and it now turns out the Keenan Timber Frame are using timber from an Irish supplier for the stud walls. In terms of that supplier of timber, of raw material, Keenan Timber Frame, the manufacturer, was amazed by the system control and data acquisition systems they have placed in, in, in their product line, 100% monitoring on moisture control, 100% monitoring on, on, knots, on, on knot content on timber. So the quality is exceptional. And the impact is profound in that the lead time on that timber now is a matter of hours, three hours down the road, as opposed to weeks from Scandinavia. The payment terms remain extended. So in all fact, the fact of the matter is that timber is in through a manufacturing process on site and being constructed before it's been paid for. So there's a couple of examples on our supply chain. I'll speak to you about a quarry, a disused quarry. An earth material being removed from site is something that is contentious at the moment in terms of Irish regulations to make sure there's no contamination leaving your site. So once soil and earth material is tested and it's proved to be okay, there are facilities that will take that soil off you. And that's a cost that we see rising. And Michael is going to speak to this shortly. We've bought a disused quarry. We're using that to take our inert material. So now we've hedged our costs on the exit side of that. If there's a surplus capacity, in that quarry in the future, we can open it up to third parties and get a return on that. I've shown you integration from suppliers to our suppliers to an exit on earth material. And in the near future, we'll be making a significant announcement in terms of further integration and further innovation right across our supply chain. So I'm going to leave you on a quotation. And the quotation is disputed whether it's Darwin or Messingson, but it speaks about it's not the strongest or the most intelligent that survives. It's those who are able to change. And Stephen opened his presentation earlier today about changing and the structural changes and reforms that were across the construction industry. I've spoken about we've changed standard designs. I've spoken about we've new standard designs coming tomorrow. I've spoken about our sales and operations planning approach to our manufacturing business. I've spoken about our design teams. Our design teams challenge now from a, procurement, from a commercial perspective, not only design. So finally, each day, each day in our business, we innovate, we integrate, we consolidate, and we win. So I'm ha now going to hand you over to Tony. Tony's going to speak to us about construction on site and the good relationships we have with our subcontractors. Thank you, Peter. I'm Tony McLaughlin, and I'm Head of Suburban Delivery at Glen Bay. Today, I'd like to update you on the progress we've made on developing our supply chain and how we're implementing technology so that we can continue to scale our business. As Stephen has mentioned earlier, our construction delivery is split into two components, suburban and urban. Why? Well, we recognise that the delivery of these two elements, as Stephen has touched on, require completely different skill sets and competencies. We know what our teams can do. We also know where we can make improvements to optimise and specialise within our business. We firmly believe in hiring the right people to do the right job 
and empowering them to get it done. Going forward, our suburban developments will centre around traditional greenfield, low-rise residential houses and apartments. We have and continue to complete high-quality schemes of this nature, such as Cush Lawson and Taylors Hill, which you've seen earlier in the videos. Our urban developments will focus on brownfield sites, providing high-rise residential schemes. We've recently completed examples of these in Marina Village in Greystones and Herbert Hill in Dundrum. My colleague Fergus will go into further detail on these and a few more a little later. Key to our continued successful delivery is not only the 330 employees we have within the business, but also our supply chain of 2,000 people on an average day. The fallout from the recession saw much of the industry, the industry chain, supply chain overexposed financially. This, along with restricted credit in the market, meant that there were numerous stop-start developments, leading to a reluctance for subcontractors to scale and grow their business. At Lenvey, we've taken a partnership approach with our supply chain. We provide them with clear roadmap of annual targets across multi-phase projects. We can ensure consistent and coordinated work and give them the confidence to scale their business with us. Since IPO, we've put significant effort into growing our supply chain. We've worked hard with our subcontractors and now they understand and believe in the Glenvay way. What is the Glenvay way? That's our standard expectations, it's our processes, it's our procedures that we require across all of our sites. It includes site setup, health and safety, environmental requirements, procurement processes, our quality expectations, amongst others. With this in mind, I'd now like to show you a short video of how our partners view working with Lenvay. When I first started in 2014, it was myself and another engineer, so working with Glenvay over the last couple of years has allowed me to grow and give me more confidence, I guess, like to employ people. Like. Well, we've been working with Glenvay since 2013. Um, we would have been uh, probably only myself and two apprentices at the time. And then when things progressed and Glenvay obviously expanded, our own company expanded. Glenvay is allowing my company grow um, to, to where it is today. It's different working with one of the big players, you know, you have to up your game, up the ante, but it's, it's been really, really good. Glenbay are very, very well organised, right from the top to the bottom. It's clearly set out from the office to what, what is the scope of works, so that we can clearly set that out to our staff to say that, they, that it's all organised when it comes to site and everything runs smoothly. Well, I think Glenvay really transformed the building industry in Ireland because of their approach to it. Uh, they have a dynamic team. Um, they also have, uh, you know, they're very open to new, new suggestions and, and solutions on how, to, on how the building industry should, should progress to the future. They know the direction that they want to go and they have a niche in the market. They sort of tick all the boxes and all the various house types they try to deliver to the different types of the market. They are extremely competent at what they do, adopt a very professional attitude and we enjoy a close working partnership with them and with their procurement team and their site personnel. Cash flow is key for us to expand in our business in terms of paying suppliers, in terms of paying wages and just basically building the business. And I suppose, you know, the big attraction with Len Bay is because obviously of the output that they're producing, um, we know going forward, you know, we would have at any given time, we would always be looking six months to 12 months ahead, which is massive for our business because we can grow our business knowing you know, once we put a valuation in at the end of the month, payment is always there, it's very prompt. We have to be ensured that, that, that payment is there when we need to be, to pay our suppliers, pay our subcontractors, pay our direct employees, so it's very, very important to, uh, to know that the finances are in place and there's nothing to worry about finances so that we can get on with what we do good. The certainty for suppliers, not alone KTF, for subcontractors, we find that a lot of suppliers, subcontractors, sort of migrate towards us because they know that we're working for a client like Glenvay. So the assurance is always there for the, those people as well. When, when I'm planning with Glenvay, I'm planning for not just this year, next year, the following year. And a lot of the projects that I work in would be three year programs because there's only so many houses you can deliver per year on a particular site. So for me, as I said, there's safety. When I'm talking, implying somebody, I go, here's the project. Not alone, this is a three year project, which means if you stay with me, I know we're okay for the next couple of years from a financial point of view. It's a centralized procurement process with Glenvay. 
So you tend to work with the same people in the office for every project, no matter where that is. So you always know the person that you're dealing with and you always get the outcome that they want and what you also want as well. When we have that knowledge of the 20 sites and more to come, uh, it allows us to also achieve greater economies of scale, that we can deliver cost savings when the ba when the based on the, the the fact that the volumes are higher it, it allows for cheaper prices I guess for quality materials. When we started a deal with Glenvay where a lot of previous builders we would have been dealing on site whereas everything is done through the office now with Glenvay you know it's a better system. When you're dealing with one procurement team there's obviously relationships and work practices and personnel will build close working relationships and an understanding of each other's requirements and style. The relationship with Glenvay is really, really good at the moment and again, down to the certainty of numbers that they have coming in, it's going to get nothing but better. We look forward to working closely with everyone in Glenvay and to, to being a remaining part of that journey and to be a trusted partnership working closely towards their success in the future. We're 20 years in business now, the last year gone by, and we have a 40 year plan in front of us and we need to be working for the people that that know how to build houses, know how to produce houses and keep the staff going that we have already on the books and maybe expand on that as well. Our business is growing hand in hand with, with, with Len Vey, what they're trying to achieve. And you know, that's the big thing for us. You know, we, we all work well together. It's exciting times. As you can see in the video, we work collaboratively with our subcontractors and they have a growing desire to work with us. One of the key areas that we focus on to enable them to scale is credit. To reduce the effect of restricted credit within the system, we've taken the decision to centrally procure all or majority of our high value items that we use each and every day. Items such as heat pumps, sanitary insulation and plasterboard are, are free issued to our subcontractors so it's reduced their credit requirements. As a result of this and other initiatives, we've been able to maintain and indeed at times reduce the cost of our subcontractor packages. In particular, our mechanical, our timber frame and our dry lining, some of which you've heard about from Peter earlier on. Back to the video, knowing that Lenve has the ability to pay and pay on time reduces the need for the subcontractors to avail of discount invoicing. This in turn leads to more competitive pricing for us. Subcontractors are now targeting Glenve for business and they want to work with us. In the last 15 months alone, we've been able to add 191 approved partners to our panel. Put simply, this means that despite growing to circa 20 sites, we now have more people to pick from. To become an approved partner with Lenve, we assess a range of competencies, including health and safety, resources, quality and previous performance, amongst others. During the tender process, we consider these factors, along with price, to ensure that not only do we get the best value, but also desired performance. This process also ensures we don't have a reliance on any single contractor. There are many obvious advantages of maintaining a substantial supplier base. Healthy competition, minimising cost inflation, and it, it facilitates our continued scale and our ability to open multiple sites together at the same time. Our ambition and clear roadmap to scale gives us substantial opportunities for strategic partnerships and long-term procurement options. Our ability to bulk buy and enter into long-term agreements has multiple benefits. As Peter referred to earlier, by streamlining our specification, we now realise economies of scale. We can now provide higher quality premium products at very competitive prices, ultimately providing a better home for our clients. We can provide, and maintain, we can provide maintenance plans and meaningful warranties for our customers, giving them further peace of mind with the sale of our homes. We can control material costs for the duration of projects and minimise inflation risk. Ultimately, we can maintain and manage a sustainable supply chain as we continue to grow. We have and continue to see the positive effect of this strategy particularly in packages such as kitchens, appliances and heat pumps. At Lenve, we have a centralised procurement approach, headed up by Richard Caldwell. As a result of his, of his hard work and the work of his team, we get the benefit of a portfolio-focused strategy and avoid a silo approach from any particular site. We plan just-in-time deliveries to manage logistics and help minimise our, our carbon footprint. Where possible, we work with local suppliers so that we can provide local employment. For our suppliers, the knowledge that Glenvay has the ability to pay and pay on time reduces their requirement for credit insurance, and this encourages more competitive pricing also. Along with a sustainable supply chain, we are utilising technology to enable continued growth and actively manage cost, quality, health and safety and programme. 
Our aim is for a more connected construction, as I hope you'll see in the following video. Our ambition in Glen Bay is to be innovators and market leaders. In Glen Bay, we're very lucky with the people we have in the business, and the people have really driven the technology. We have a collaborative environment where everybody's on the same page. To facilitate our coordination, we use the Aconnex platform. It's an online platform that's accessible to everybody within the business. We use multiple modules from document control to health and safety. We use the tendering section to ensure a transparent tendering procedure that's fully auditable. We use the supplier's packages to ensure our documents are contained and managed and we're fully compliant at every stage of the process. And we also use workflows and workflows streamline our process. We use technology to help us collaborate from health and safety to quality management. We use Aconex Field. That's an on-site mobile app that empowers us to inspect, observe, and identify and raise any positive or corrective actions that may occur. That provides a platform with both the office and our designers. The technology we use to control our sites comes in the form of TAG. That's a time and attendance software. It's a biometric software. Only pre-qualified and competent people are allowed on our sites. They have to have their certification, they have to have their inductions. Using this information, we can then assess resources and man hours worked on site. We utilise our drone scans and our videos to record and communicate on the Aconex platform with all parts of our business. With our drone scans, we can input all our design drawings. This gives us the ability in pre-construction to coordinate the works better, to understand the site constraints, to overlay legal boundaries, and to facilitate a more streamlined process when we get to site. Utilising our drone technology with real-time kinematics and some ground control points, we can automatically fly pre-identified routes to ensure consistency across our projects. This information is then taken into PIX4D BIM and it's correlated, essentially stitching all the photographs together to give us a 3D scan of the area. We can then take that 3D scan, export it to CAD and input that into our Earthworks modelling software. This gives us the best opportunity to value engineer and de-risk our civil engineering projects at an early stage before we even go into a site. On most of our sites, we use robotic GPS excavators. These excavators are pre-programmed. They know where to dig, how deep to dig, and without prior approval, cannot go any further or any deeper. This gives us certainty around costs and variations. And that gives us a distinct advantage when we're doing monthly valuations and end of year accounts and negates any potential conflicts that may occur. Another benefit of using the drone scans is we have historical information. We can now measure, take areas, calculate volumes, Practical examples of that might be, I can go back three months and I can determine how many blocks went on a substructure. I can see how much stone went under a road. This significantly de-risks our variations and our subcontractor management. By using our time and attendance software, we now have the information to compare the production rates, which we generated from the time-stamped drone images, to the resources that were put on by any particular subcontractor. This gives us a key insight into their potential margin and provides a more transparent and clearer route to procurement going forward. We use our drone scans to update our programs in real time. This provides the business with transparency to look across various projects and ensure that we are agile and we can adjust site production rates to meet the demand. This allows us to effectively manage our portfolio in a far more efficient way. We're encouraging technology to connect sites I'm not aware of anybody that has taken this technology to be as advanced as we have it. We have huge ambitions in Lenve and technology is going to be absolutely key to that. In the coming years, I see a point where we can use augmented reality. People should be able to look around at a 3D model of their house and pick their house and walk the site. Why not? As I mentioned in the video, we currently have our drone surveys integrating with our modelling software to ensure that we we incorporate the best value solution from the outset of a project. This one activity is having a profound effect on how we manage and plan our earthworks, the single largest risk item when it comes to suburban delivery. We've embraced technology. It helps us shape how we operate and grow our business. It helps us communicate, manage and monitor our sites. We can now coordinate our portfolio and more accurately plan for the future. This alongside a solid, sustainable supply chain position us well for, for the ambitious but achievable growth and expansion that Stephen has outlined earlier. I'd like to thank you for your time, and now I'll hand you over to Fergus Boyle, who will talk to you about our delivery capabilities for our urban developments. Good 
Let's keep it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <clears throat> my name is Fergus Boyle. I'm construction director for the urban developments at Glenvay. I have 25 years' experience in large scale apartment construction, both in London and in Dublin. The following will give you some sense of the size, complexity of some of the projects I've been involved in. To start off with, uh, Wapping Lane. Here I was construction director with Ballymore. It was the first residential project after the recession. We built 124 apartments over two buildings with a basement parking. This opened the gateway to Embassy Gardens, next door to the new American Embassy in Nine Elms. This project was funded by NAMA. Embassy Gardens was the single biggest construction site in London at its time, and at its peak we had 11 tower cranes, 1,000 operatives, plus a management staff of 78 people. We hand-built 3 million bl bricks to complete the commercial, retail, restaurant and leisure facilities, along with a Waitrose supermarket and a large underground car park. Lincoln Square, which is only three, st three streets away from here, was an island site in central London where we delivered a very high-spec apartment development next door to the law courts and the universities. That was for Sean Mulryan. So here, this is here is what I'm doing now for Stephen Garvey. I am assembling and a strong team in Glenvay that is delivering at the moment. Here are some examples of what we're delivering at the present. Herbert Hill in Dundrum, this 90 unit apartment scheme was completed in quarter three last year, including full fit out with furniture and all white goods. The scheme was sold to Realis, Realis Investments and handed over following a snagging process, which was completed over a short period of two weeks, uh, showing the quality of the product that we had achieved on that job. Marina Village Greystones, this 210 unit development constructed on public lands, and we are engaged and working closely with the local authority on this project. The first block of this coastal development was completed quarter four, 2019, and the balance of the project is due for completion at the end of this year. This project also has a large public park and coastal walkway. Adelaide Road in Bray, this 71 unit development, commenced in quarter three, 2019. The structure is now up to second floor. All packages and subcontractors are procured and we are expected to complete this project in quarter one, 2021. Coming up now, here are some of our new projects um, which we're just starting. Eden and Cork. We are breaking ground on this 271 unit apartment complex in March. The plan is to build this, to, to build the Undercroft car park up to podium level in traditional uh, concrete construction. Thereafter, we are considering the 2D building of the apartments themselves, which Peter alluded to earlier on in his presentation. Dublin Docklands, this multi-unit scheme with two hotels, office block, and 1,150 apartments. This is very similar in scale and size to Embassy Gardens, which we referred to earlier on in my presentation. Enabling, <coughs> enabling works has commenced on this project and a full construction will ramp up in Q2 this year. In addition to Glenvay's procurement team and existing, and existing subcontractor base, it is my intention to bring expertise in from the UK we are currently negotiating with formwork, bricklaying and drylining contractors, all of whom I've worked with previously and who have a wealth of experience and proven track record in their <coughs> respective fields and are enthusiastic about the prospect 
of expanding their operations into Ireland. Castleknock in Dublin. This city centre site is located near the Phoenix Park, the largest enclosed par public park in any city in Europe. This 190 unit scheme will start in 2021 and we've already started looking at the buildability of this project. Cork Docklands. This is the first development in the Cork Docklands. As you enter the city, this Glenvey development will be the key landmark on the horizon. This high-rise gateway includes offices, commercial buildings and a hotel. 1,100 apartments will form part of this development. As I said, I am building my team and delivering of these projects outlined above require a strong and committed senior management team. Brendan Corcoran has an, establ an established track record and delivering projects with Glenvey and has recently been appointed as senior contract, contracts manager on the Bray and Greystones projects. Joining me from the UK are Kevin Delaney and Brendan Cohen. Kevin, who was a senior contracts manager, sorry, Kevin, who will be the senior contracts manager on our Docklands project, has worked alongside me in Ballymore on Embassy Gardens project. Brendan Cohen also has considerable management experience in London apartments, has just completed 250 City Road with the Berkeley Group. Brendan will <coughs> head up our Cork projects. My senior management team, with a wealth of experience and track record at home and abroad, gives Glenvey a sizable advantage in establishing a reputation as a key player in the apartment building market in Ireland. The apartment market is a great opportunity for Glenvey, and I am very excited to lead it for Stephen. <laughs>